Chapter 5, Three-Legged Dog As we hit the debtor's resident town of Chipstead I felt a sense of unwellness leaking into my being. Without fail, and every time I'd been in London my stomach had been upset and I'd had headaches caused by the foul heaviness of petrol fumes in the air. Here we were on the outskirts of the capital and the atmospheric change was already being acknowledged by my system. Wakefield may have its faults, but you couldn't put a price on fresh air. I pulled up on what appeared to be Main Street. We'd only set off about 8.30 in the morning and rolled up well before dinner and in record time. I wound down the car window and asked an elderly-looking old bint, who happened to be out on her morning jaunt, four directions. Excuse me love do you know where I might find Bullfinch Lane? I said with a sloppy grin, one that reeked of wind-up merchant. As though the street name itself were a play on words or indeed I already knew where it was. She turned to face me, her lipstick cockeyed, and two daubs of rouge had been applied with a whitewash brush. Her eyebrows were different colors. She looked positively ridiculous. She looked at me like I was from another planet, I was, Yorkshire, and said, sorry young man, could you repeat that? Bending her ear in an action unnecessary to make her point. Clearly this one needed her bloody ears rinsing out. Bullfinch Lane you silly mare, where is it? Her face turned a color of purple disdain. She clearly wasn't used to such obnoxious Wakefield charm. She replied, it's about half a mile down the road on the left. Abruptly turning her back and storming off, mumbling something or other about my rudeness. Sorry love. I smiled ruefully. Silly old cow. I hoped her legs chafed as she sauntered down the road with the gait of a three-legged dog and all the sex appeal of a school dinner lady. As she crossed the road I hoped she might become the Ripper's next victim, if he ever ventured this far, though clearly expanding down south wasn't part of his modus operandi. Tone it down a bit Paul lad. Wiggly said with a begging tone. Now wrong with that Wiggers. You can't get locked up for having front. I pointed out lapsing into a broad Barnsley dialect to mock his Grimethorpe affliction once again. I was getting anxious now, I had business to take care of, I put my foot down and motored down the straight, swung a left and screeched to a dead halt outside the address we'd been given. It was a narrow street, there wasn't anywhere to park. I temporarily blocked the road completely. I knew that would spur me on to deal with the matter swiftly.